by word of war, I think, is oil and 9 11. Uh, on July 22nd, 2006, at um, Mon Monco Democracy for America event, where you and Ray McGovern acted as guest speakers, John Gold, a fellow member of the 9 11 Truth Movement, asked you about your view of the possibility that the United States may have been complicit in the attacks of September 11, 2001. You said at the time that you felt that there was no hard evidence to support this theory, although you expressed frustration with the 9 11 Commission report. As an extension to that question, I would like to know if not the fact that molten metal was discovered in the basements of World Trade Centers, number one, two, and seven, if not the almost pre-fall speed of collapse of all three towers that allegedly resulted from fire damage, and most importantly, uh, particularly because you're a firefighter, if not the at least 115 oral histories of firefighters on 9-11 who had all areas of the towers reported that they specifically interpreted what they interpreted as controlled demolition events, if not any of these out of the numerous examples that there are, what do you feel qualifies as hard evidence? And regardless of your answer, are you in favor of a new investigation of 9-11? And if so, would you be willing to put forth that message in all of your future presentations on behalf of the 9-11 families, uh, the majority of which are calling for a new, truly independent investigation of 9-11? Well, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for your question. I'll start out with the easy part of the answer first. Uh, well, I'm definitely in favor of uh, a new investigation on 9-11. I think that the first investigation was a uh, was political damage control. I don't think the American people were well served by it. The, the mere fact that that investigation cannot answer all the questions that are out there points to its inadequacies. And uh, to me, the best way to bring this issue uh, you know, to, to heal is to have all the data available, no matter how embarrassing this data, this data may be to certain politicians. It needs to be on the table and so that we can evaluate it fully, objectively, impartially, and, and get to the truth. Because that's what this is about. It's about the truth. It's not about politics, it's about the truth. A horrible thing happened on September 11th. You know, 3,000 people died. We need to find out why they died, how they died, and, and what was responsible. Now, I continue to this day to believe that, um, I don't know if that's me or that the FBI can jam in my <laughs> I continue to believe that, uh, that what occurred on that day was, was 19 terrorists hijacked four airplanes and did horrible things with those airplanes. Um, I, I continue to review the data. I, I have hunted down as many firefighters as I can to talk to them about that data. I've uh, talked to people who were, who were knowledgeable about controlled demolitions. Uh, you know, I'll give you a tongue-in-cheek answer first. If 9-11 was indeed a conspiracy of the government, it will be the first time in American history they'd ever shown that much confidence. Because <laughs> you, you'd have to be the most confident force of evil in the world to accomplish what they did. Um, I view 9-11 war as, uh, as a product of incompetence. I view it as an incompetence uh, in terms of the relationship between the FBI and the CIA. I view it as incompetence of our government's ability to discern the threat and deal with the threat. But more importantly, I view the biggest crime uh, committed in the United States wasn't what occurred on 9-11, but on 9-12, where politicians used the horrible events of 9-11 to set in motion a policy that got us involved in a war with Iraq, a nation that had nothing whatsoever to do with the events of 9-11. And that's one of the investigations that I'd like to see uh, pursued, not just what happened on 9-11, but how 9-11 was used on 9-12 to get us involved in a war that had nothing to do with, with the events of that day. But again, you know, we can disagree, we, and, I, and I know we do on certain things, but I think we're, we're in agreement that there must be a search for the truth. If anything, the United States of America is about the truth. And if we're operating, again, you can't solve the problem unless you can find the problem. And if we're trying to solve a post-9-11 world, we have to find what exactly happened on 9-11. So I share your concerns, and I, I, I have been saying from, from day one, we need to know everything. The politicians can't hide behind you know, any potential embarrassment. We have to have all the facts, and I, and I think we should get the facts. Thank you. It said, we, you know, it comes down to my, my basic premises of intelligence. Office. I'm here to solve problems. All right, 9-11 represents a huge problem. I think we can agree. We've got, ah, you know, 3,000 Americans dead. The World Trade Center's down. The Pentagon's got a hole in it. And who knows what happened to that Ford airplane that had been brought down by brave passengers. Um, <coughs> why did they want to attack us? That's a simple question I ask. Why, why, why did they want to do this? And I'm shouting down, how dare you ask that question? All you're doing by asking that question is condoning their attack. You're giving their attack legitimacy. You're, you're saying, why they do it? As if they have a justification? I'm not justifying it. I just want to know why. Because see, with the why, 
I can now come up with a solution. Why do they want to do this? Why did they come to this? It's important to understand why. You know, in my 12 years, I had the opportunity to deal with what we call tier one counter-terrorist uh, forces. Uh, you might have seen them in the movies. They call them like Delta Force and SEALs. These are the guys who wear the black Nomex and run around the world with big nets and you know, shoot people. And they're pretty cool. And, and a lot of people think that's the solution because it's pretty sexy. These guys fast work on airplanes, kick down doors, pop, pop, and they kill terrorists. And they do it very well. And I've asked these guys, is that the solution? Kill them all? You know what their answer is? No. Nope. For every terrorist you kill, Bob Moore may. We're losing the game. You won't win the war on terrorism by killing terrorists. You win the war on terrorism by stopping the production of terrorists. And you can only stop the production of terrorists if you understand why they become terrorists to begin with. What is it that pushes a normal human being over the line? Are they born a terrorist? Do they come out as a terrorist? they come out of their mother's womb? Osama bin Laden was born wanting to attack America. No, something happened in his life to get him to say he wants to attack. And I'm not saying that we need to know this to justify what he did. We need to know this so we stop producing Osama bin Laden's. And if we're not willing to engage in that kind of analytical investigation, we're in for a long and frustrating road because we will continue to make terrorists quicker than we can kill terrorists and they will continue to attack us and that's not the future I want.